when your office manager is telling you to get in there and do that extraction when you need a medical clearance or somebody is forcing you as a hygienist or a dentist to practice in a way that you're uncomfortable with, you know, just say no, stand your ground. Hey, everybody. My name is Dr. David Rice. We are back for another episode of Gloves Off. I'm here with my great friend, Candy Velez. Hey, Candy. How are you today? I am great. So I'm a practicing dental hygienist from Sebring, Florida, and we're here to going to duke it, duke it out. <laughs> we're going to do well. Listen, I want to talk about something that's really important, and, and that is how to stand your ground. And, and maybe we're going to tap dance or not tap dance we're going to dance on on the unethical side of dentistry because things are happening out there hopefully in a smaller amount of practice but you and i hear this all the time so i think we learn best from examples give me an example of an unethical situation and maybe how you stand your ground well i'm going to give you an example of an unethical situation where I think I was a little too scared to stand my ground at first Love it because I was a brand new dental hygienist right out of school. And this was my first job. So this particular situation, I was treating a patient for a full mouth debridement. And as I was finishing up with the treatment, getting ready to dismiss the patient, um, one of the hygiene managers was visiting the office that day. And it's interesting what happens when uh, there's pressures upon people that you don't understand what's going on on the other side. Um, but instead of dismissing my patient, she came to me and said, you just finished a debridement, didn't you? Well, that inflammation should have healed already. So go back in there, reprobe. If the pockets are there, you're going to go get a treatment plan for scaling and root planning. You're going to present it and you're going to do it right now. Okay. How'd that make you feel? I'm going to tell you, Dr. Rice, that um, that was the moment in time where I drew the line in the sand. I didn't feel good when I went home that night. And I said, from that moment forward, no one would ever, ever um, put me in that position ever again and compromise my integrity. And I walked a different path from that point forward. I love that. It's it's not an easy thing to do, like you said, especially when you're you're new to hygiene, to dentistry, or or even if you've been doing this for a while, you're you're new to a practice. But okay, so you're a Florida practitioner. What does Florida have to say? Ooh, I'll tell you what Florida has to say, and I want to read this uh, word for word, Doctor Rice, because I think that this can benefit any dentist, hygienist out there who's been put in an unethical situation or who has been told that, um, you know, you're going to do this my way. When we go to school, you as the dentist, you earn the license. Me as the hygienist, I've earned my license. And according to the state of Florida, um, it states the legislative purpose for enacting this chapter is to ensure that every dentist or dental hygienist practicing in this state meets minimum requirements for safe practice without undue clinical interference from persons not licensed under this chapter. So when your office manager is telling you to get in there and do that extraction, when you need a medical clearance or somebody is forcing you as a hygienist or a dentist to practice in a way that you're uncomfortable with, you know, just say no, stand your ground. Stand your ground. Can I give you a quick example? Because I Yes, please to. tell me. All right. So I'm a <laughs> brand new associate. I literally moved back to Buffalo, New York from Pittsburgh after my residency for this position, which was, oh, by the way, with a part-time faculty member that I thought was an awesome dentist. So there's the frame. It was about my third week um, in the practice. And office manager brings me a pan and says, you know, Hey, David, can you go and give me all the probing depths for this patient? I'm like, absolutely. What room are they in? Like, well, they're not here. What? Well, it's kind of a clinical thing. And they're like, well, Dr. So-and-so does it this way all the time. So I just moved back. 
all my stuff and I had to quit my job. So I was a young dentist. I had no money. I had lots of debt. Now I'm back in the city and I'm on this island. But to your point, you have a license. You worked really hard for it. I had a license. I worked really hard for it. We all are going to be faced with difficult scenarios. I know some of you have kids and you have people depending on you. But it's still important to stand your ground because this is a small community of dentistry, isn't it? It is. It is. And, and, you know, what happens in these situations is, you know, if you don't stand your ground and you find yourself in front of the board and you tell them, you know, but, you know, somebody was pressuring me to do it. You know, they, they made me feel uncomfortable. This was a um, hostile work environment. They're going to look at you and say, you had a choice. You always have a choice. And you could have said no. If they didn't give you the proper equipment, why didn't you refer it out? If you cannot perform um, to the standard of care, then you should not be providing treatment to the patient, period. So, A hundred percent. So, hey, friends, no matter who you are on the dental team, if you're on the clinical side, if you're on the administrative side, if you're being asked to do something that you know is wrong, understand two things. You have to be able to put your head on the pillow and sleep at night, know you did the right thing. And two, if you've lost that compass that somebody out there is going to hold you accountable for it, they're not going to care what the other circumstances are. They're only going to care about if what you did was right or wrong. Candy, thanks for hanging out. I know we're dragging you back for more. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. This was a very um, amazing conversation, and I hope that uh, our viewers find it very insightful. And maybe on the YouTube, we might be able to share some cases or something like that um, in the comments. I'd love that. All right.